Hello, my nerds in training. Welcome back. So today we're going to take up question number two from Vectors and Scalers part three, specifically working with questions that involve the component method. So I've already uh, sort of pre-set up my little thing here in the, the GRFS, and I'm going to copy my information into the given section here. And again, we're looking for the displacement. Now, you may notice something here, my naming conventions. So I went vector A, then B, then C, then E. So you're probably wondering why. What's with the jump? Why did you jump from uh, C to E? And that has to do with the fact that D is actually rep uh, is reserved for the displacement. So hence, I, um, when I make my vector labels, I, I tend to avoid the letter D. As a reminder, displacement is just the resultant. All right, so let's do this. So we're looking for the magnitude of the displacement and the direction. So let's start uh, completing our vector chart. This time I decided to type the labels, but I don't usually do that. Okay, so let's start off with um, our vector A. With our vector A, we know that it has a magnitude of 10 kilometers. It travels north first, then turns 42 degrees towards the west. So again, your components go in this order. That first, then that one second. So let's draw it. Starting north, and then we go west. And then we add the main vector, vector A. So this is vector A. This would be the Y component. And this would be the X component of vector A. And of course, inside here, that's your theta A. And don't forget to dash your lines. Dear OneNote, please add the ability to dash lines without having to do this. It's kind of dumb. Anyway, okay, so the information that we got. So vector A, we know that it's 10 kilometers. So that's the magnitude. So we drop 10 there. And the angle's 42 degrees. So that's fairly, fairly straightforward there. Okay, so now start identifying AX. Now remember, theta is here. So this is the opposite side, and then this would be the adjacent side. That means AX is associated with sine. So AX is equal to A sine theta A. Substituting our values in, 10 sine 42 degrees. So that is equal to 6.691 kilometers. And which direction? Look at that vector. And it is pointing towards the west. It also said west up here, so therefore, west. It's actually fairly straightforward. Now off to do the y component. So if the x component was sine, the y component has to be cosine. There's no question about it. That's exactly how it works. So that's going to be cos theta a. Well, actually, let's, let's try that. Look, look, at, look at that. Not even paying attention here. Good gravy. Okay, a y is equal to a cos theta a. Substitute our values in, and we get 7.431 kilometers, and now we need the direction, and that is north, looking at the diagram, and also looking at the fact that it literally says north, and north it is. Now, I did one thing that I, I shouldn't have done. Well, not shouldn't, but I've caught it in time. On this line here, so notice I didn't write anything here because it's just going to be ax again, and, and same with the y. But on this line, it needs to be AX with the harpoon. And the reason why it needs to be with the harpoon is because we have the direction there now. It's in vector mode. So try to, try to keep that in mind. And then AY in vector mode. All right, so let's take a look at the second vector. So the second vector has a magnitude of 20 kilometers west, then south. So again, you start with west, then you draw the component going south. So we start with our X component, followed by our Y component. And this is a little detail I'd like to just take a moment to point out. In our first vector, we started with the Y component, then we did the X. But in vector B, it's the X component, then followed by the Y component. And that changes the relationship between which side is going to be sine and which side is going to be cosine. So you need to have your wits about you. All right, so let's get into it. So first, we go west, then we go south. And the angle is actually fairly small, which means 
that we're going more west than we're going south because we're only drifting south by 15 degrees. That being said, this diagram isn't super critical that it has to be to scale because the algebra takes care of all the heavy lifting. But, you know, it's, it's nice to make it somewhat. Okay, so there. We start with our west component. So that is going to be our, our BX. And then our BY, I'm just going to make it a bit shorter. Also, I'm going to move it down a little bit so I have a little bit more real estate to work with. And then I'm actually going to draw the actual vector B. So that's our vector B. And then we're going to zoom in again, of course. So this is our vector B. This is BX. That would be BY. And inside here, that is theta B. Dashing our components, of course. And now let's label the magnitudes. So side B was 20 and the angle 15 degrees. All right. So again, if this is angle B here, that's theta B, Y is the opposite side now, and X is the adjacent. That means that BX is equal to B cos theta B. And notice up here, AX was the sine function. So it will change depending on the geometry of the vector. Substituting in, so that's 19.319 kilometers. And if we take a look at our X component, it's pointing to the west. Now moving on to the Y component. If the X component was cos, the Y component 100% is going to be the sine function. It's If one is cos, the other is sine and vice versa. That is always the case. And again, if you notice, I, I'm, I'm not carrying the sig figs here during the interim calculation. I will just worry about the sig figs at the end. So I'm just carrying a, a, as many decimals as practical. Also, BX with well, the harpoon. I, I forgot that, but whatever. We're fine. You're fine. Everyone's fine. BY. There we go. So the magnitude of BY is 5.176 kilometers, and that is going south. And finally, oops, definitely not finally. <laughs> we have two more vectors, sorry. So the pentultimate, which technically is fifth ultimate, but whatever. Okay, so um, has a magnitude of 35 east south so we start going east first then followed by south and it's 65 degrees which means that we're going more south than east there's my east there's my south and there's actually vector c so that's c this is cx cy dash the components and label theta c and notice the um the direction always goes at the tail of the vector. That's, that's the case. It always sits at the tail of vector C. And now let's check out what our magnitudes are. 30, 35 for the magnitude, 65 for the angle. Once again, taking a look at where theta C is, CY is the opposite, CX is the adjacent, CX is equal to C cos theta C. So that's 35 cos of 65 degrees. So that's 14.792 kilometers, and that's going east. All right, I had to just rewrite that. One note glitched out on me again. Fun times. CY is equal to C sine theta C. Sounds like a tongue twister, doesn't it? C sine theta C by the seashore. That's a terrible joke, and I say that every year. But I'm still going to say it. But anyway, I digress. Substituting in, so that's 35 sine of 65. So that's a magnitude of 31.721 kilometers, and that is going south. And there we go. All right, we got one more vector left. So vector E, we have a magnitude. Oh, dear. We're going to have to fix that. Also, terrible. We have to fix the harpoon on A. It was the wrong harpoon. HVEC. There we go. Ah, I'm revealing my secrets. Backslash HVEC is how you get that half harpoon thing. The more you know. Anyway, um, so, all right, um, uh, 45 kilometers west, then north. So we point west first, then we go north, and we're more north than west because the angle's bigger. So let's do this. Wait, did I say more west than north? I meant more north than west. I don't remember what I said, but it's more north than west. There's the west. Go north. Draw the actual vector E. I'm actually going to make it a little bit bigger. Don't you kind of wish you could do this with paper? Okay, there's vector E. 
There's my EX, my EY, some dash action, theta E, and I believe that was 55 degrees, and we had a magnitude of 45 kilometers. Let's just double check that. Yeah, 45 kilometers and west 55 degrees north. That's west 55 degrees north. Sweet. Okay, so again, let's take a look. There's theta there. That's the opposite. That makes that the adjacent. So our AX is going to be the cosine function. How about E? Yeah, that would be helpful. EX is equal to E cos theta E. So that's 45 cos of 55 degrees. So that's equal to 25, 8.811 kilometers. And that is going west. Don't forget your little harpoon action there. If the X component is cos, the Y component 100% is sine, substituting in 45 sine of 55 degrees. So EY is equal to 36.862 kilometers, and that is heading north. See, north. So finally, we're ready to actually calculate the components of X and Y. So we're looking for the resultant in each case. So we're going to look for the resultant in X and the resultant in Y. So unfortunately, I've kind of, kind of ran out of real estate down here. So I won't actually be able to substitute the numbers in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make two columns specifically for the RX and one for the RY. So in this column over here, we're going to do our RX calculation. Next step, we're going to drop the vector notation and then we're going to start substituting values in. So let's take a look at our A value. So I'm just going to cheat and I'm going to copy this. All right. So that was eight point, really eight, how about 6.691 kilometers west. Well, I want to convert that west to a negative sign. Let's take a look at B. Our BX was also west. That makes it negative. I'm definitely going to have to make my column a little bit bigger. Now adding the CX so that east makes this positive. Let's actually copy the correct value down. All right. So we want to get rid of that east and finally adding the X component of E, which is 25.811 kilometers west, and that west makes it negative. Oh yeah, one other thing. You don't really have to put the units in there, mostly because it takes up way too much real estate. Now here's the thing, and this is a little bit of a life lesson for you. Not every instructor is on the same page when it comes to how they expect things to be written. For instance, I personally really strongly dislike putting the units in. Other instructors, however, are all about it. There are good reasons to put the units in, but since I naturally have um, terrible handwriting, um, this is not even handwriting, this is printing, and you know, I kind of write like a gorilla with a broken arm, the fewer the extra things I need to write, the better. So that being said, you pretty much go with whatever your instructor, teacher, prof, whatever, prefers. So that's negative 37.029. Now we put the kilometers in. All right, time to interpret what does this negative 37.029 kilometers mean? Or like literally, what does the negative mean? Well, since we are on the X component, that's got to be west. So 37.029 kilometers west. All right, so let's do the Y component. So RY is equal to AY plus BY plus CY plus EY. Dropping the vector notation, and let's take a look at our AY value. Scrolling back up here. So our AY value, and I'm just going to pull the number bit, and we know that it's going north, so that is going to make that positive when I place it, uh, paste it in here. So bracket, positive, paste action. All right, so let's move on to B. That's 5.176 kilometers south. So since it's south, that makes that negative. Okay, time for CY. And uh, there we go. 31.721 kilometers south. That's going to make that negative. So a little negative sign. Paste our value. And E component. Here we go. Okay, 36.862 north. That makes it positive. 
Let's thin that out and make that a little bit smaller. Thin it up a bit there. That's thin enough, I think. Close the bracket. There we go. Okay. Yeah, still took a little bit too much real estate. All right, there we go. Our Y is equal to 7.396 kilometers. My mistake, sorry. Positive 7.396 kilometers as a vector. That makes that 7. As you can hear, the bells are going. Um, that makes it 7.396 kilometers north. All right, so next, now that we have the X, forgot the harpoon there, the RX, like I said, a right, like a gorilla with a broken arm. Um, now that we have our RX component, our RY, we now move on to the next part, which is our new vector equation and our new vector diagram. So the new vector equation is the resultant is equal to Rx plus Ry. Next is our new vector diagram. And let's get that kind of centered there. Okay, 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 I'll let it go, I'll let it go. All right, so now we have to look at our components. And when we look at our components, sorry, just zooming all over the place. So again, I like doing x first, then the y. So let's take a look at our Rx, west, then north. So we go west, then we go north. And since I have this fancy pants software, I'm going to make my resultant red. You don't have to do that, but I would judge you less if you did. All right, let's make that a little thicker. Edit our components. Oh, wait a second here. Did I do something goofy? Nope. Yeah, because the uh, if you take a look down here, the uh, X component is way bigger than the Y component. I didn't quite draw that to scale up here, but I still effectively made the X component bigger than the Y component. All right, let's label it. So that's your RX. Wait a second. No, bad human. All right, let's see if you folks can figure out what mistake I made. I, I didn't make a mistake in terms of the shape, but it has to do with the conventions I have with the dashing. So I use, I reserve the dashed lines for the things that we're looking for. We actually already have the value for Rx, and we already have the value for Ry. We just calculated those. It is, in fact, the resultant that we're solving for in this case. So that one should be the dashed one. Again, folks, that's not a universal convention. That's just something I like to do. So there's uh, that's going to be our theta r. Yeah, let's make that r a little bit, a little bit smaller there. There we go. Okay, and um, let's label the information that we got. So our Rx value. And let's get our RY. There we go. And now to calculate the magnitude of the resultant, and then we have to find theta. So we're going to find the magnitude of vector R, HVEC. There we go. All right. So the magnitude of vector R is equal to the square root of the magnitude of RX squared plus RY squared. So R is equal to the square root of 7.96 squared plus 37.029 squared, which is 37.761 kilometers. Now, remember, we're going to eventually round this to the appropriate number of sig figs, which is four, but we'll do that after we find our angle. So we have to find theta. And as a reminder, we always use, always, 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 always use the tan function. Oh, you know, I should be more specific. Okay, so let's get uh, underscore, capital R, space bar. I know technically these are physics instructional videos, but let's be real. Many of you are going to be using um, Microsoft Word products when you go to post-secondary, especially OneNote. So it's best practices to know how to do these little tricks for science students that, you know, aren't always obvious. And I'm just saving you a Google search. Okay, so now let's take a look. Um, uh, so that's uh, theta r. So that's the opposite. That's the adjacent. So that's going to be our ry over our rx. Now, technically, technically, I should have did this. Should have done this, right? That, but you know, we know that we're dealing with the magnitudes. Theta r is equal to the inverse tan slash arctan ry over rx equals. 37.029 over 7.96, 11.296 degrees. Therefore, 
our displacement. So I'm using this notation now because our resultant is the displacement. So now we have to round this to four sig figs because the original data, actually let's just double check. Yep, four sig figs. So that means we have to round it after that. Well, that six doesn't change because that's just a one. So that makes that 37.76 kilometers. All right. And now we have to get our directions. We always start off with the first vector here. So again, that's our starting point. And we go in the X direction first, then we go in the Y direction. So it's going to be west, and then north. So west, 11.2, oh, wait a second. We have to round that to four sig figs. Aha. So that makes, we round up that nine, so that becomes a zero, and then uh, we carry the one, because well, nine becomes a 10. So that becomes 11.30. You need that zero, because we have to have four sig figs. And then we went north. Yeah, north. Okay. And there you have it. All done. Your final answer, virtual internet high fives for all of you.